Hi and welcome to this video on See the Light, Easy Wins to Improve Your Asset Framework Experience. We have applied a whole lot of best practices in this uh, class so far. Um, going back to the beginning, we looked at some of our um, standard asset framework best practices. Um, and at the moment, we are currently going through our analysis best practices. On the analysis side, the first one we mentioned was splitting up a calculation into multiple steps um, and trying to reduce the number of calls for data to the data archive. The second uh, best practice we spoke about was um, just trying to apply some common sense to your scheduling. It is very easy to leave a periodic one minute schedule uh, when testing your environment. So if you are experiencing um, high resources, it's often the first place you will find uh, problems in the configuration of your analyses. Now we are going to start looking at the roll up analysis. So in our case, the chief process engineer wants to monitor the average availability of all of our FFS units. And one of his colleagues suggested that he use the formula data reference um, because it's very easy to set up and it evaluates on the fly. So there is no uh, data storage or no pie tags used. In order to assign, to create that formula, he went into PySystem Explorer, creates a variable called average availability, and then set the data reference to formula. Now in the settings field, each of the availability uh, attributes from each of the form fill and seal machines was provided with a parameter A to F. Now, uh, important to note here that you can only have 26 parameters because uh, our parameters are issued A to Z. Our equation is very simple. Just sum all the availabilities divided by six and you will have a availability value. Now that is one way of calculating the average availability using the formula. Uh, there is another way. When the engineer got back from some uh, Pi Asset Framework training, he learned that there were rollups that you could uh, configure. So if we have a look at packaging and go to the analysis tab, you can see we have a rollup calculation, uh, very similar uh, in the beginning to the expression analysis where we give it a name, specify the analysis type, only the configuration is different. Uh, for an expression analysis, you go in and you, you type in your formula, your if statement, uh, your steam calcs, whatever you want to do, and you output it to a variable. Now, with a rollup analysis, what you do is you uh, roll up attributes from other aspects the asset itself, but much more common is to roll up assets, uh, attributes from the child assets. So if we have a look at this, uh, packaging has six child assets. They are FFS one to six. And what we want to do is roll up the availability and calculate the average of that um, attribute. So by hitting evaluate, I can see that my average availability across all of my uh, child assets is 80.384. I've got my period um, scheduling configured. So we, in this case, we're doing it every minute. And what's going to happen now is that every minute um, the system is going to take all of the availability values uh, from my six assets, calculate the average and write it out to the uh, variable called average availability um, dash rollup, I believe it's called. So if we go to our attributes, yes, average availability dash rollup. Now you'll see these are not exactly the same, um, but they are close enough to the decimal point. It just depends on uh, when the value is triggered um, because remember we're not triggering them at exactly the same time. The major benefit of using the, um, the roll-up analysis is that I could change the number of child assets that I have and let's say I no longer need form fill and seal machine unit number one. I'll go ahead and delete it. I'll say OK. And now when I go to packaging, if I hit, uh, we'll need to check in for that change to be logged in. Okay. If I hit refresh, we're going to run into this issue where the formula reference is trying to reference FFS01 availability. That asset no longer exists, so the system is unable to do the calculation successfully. In order to fix this, what I'd have to do is go to my settings, delete that in the template, and then divide by five. 
uh, much easier to let the analysis run in the background because it automatically knows how to handle an increase or a decrease in the number of child assets and our roll-up calculation is going to be um, just as accurate now as it was before. Cool, that's the uh, last best practice we're gonna go through in our videos. There are a few more for you to read through um, in the remainder of the course. I definitely wouldn't um, skip them. They're just slightly smaller um, and easier to digest as a uh, exercise that you read through. Now, once you've gone through those, we'll give a, a breakdown of all the issues that were solved, um, what best practices were applied to fix those problems. And if you feel like there's uh, more research you'd like to go through, um, I definitely suggest heading over to either PySquare or learning.osisoft.com and taking advantage of the resources that are available for you there.